Hello guys, Durant slash Learn Swain here and in this video I am going to be assembling the printer bot simple. So as you can see I have all the stuff that came in the box laid out here, got all the stepper motors, the control board still in its anti static bag, the filaments and rods, screws, zip ties, and some tools, whatnot, all ready for assembly. This video is gonna be sort of like a time lapse sort of thing. So, you will be watching most of it. And, um, yeah, so I guess we'll do some supports. Let's get a cute little fan, uh, an auto leveling probe, we've got bearings, uh, that's some extruder parts, and of course, these are all the wooden pieces that it's made out of. They're all sort of joined together. I need to break them apart still. And, um, interestingly enough, these parts don't actually have numbers on them. You need this sheet to see which number is which, which the uh, instructions refer to. On here they'll refer to part numbers, say like, they just reference the numbers and stuff. Also interestingly enough, Amazon shipping tells me it's still in transit, it's not even out for delivery yet, even though it's right here. So that's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, that's um, about it for the introduction. It's the little code and stuff. Oh yeah, the power supply. This is something I was kind of worried about. Um, because this comes with an American plug, but this is, it does support 240 volts max input, and you have a standard um, PC plug thing at the top. I don't know what the connector's called. So, as you can see, it comes with one of these American plug things, which I'm not going to use, obviously, because we have South African plugs here, and the European plug system as well. They use both here in South Africa, it's weird. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just plug in one of those, it's fine. Uh, worst case scenario, I'd have to buy another power supply to power this thing. Um, so, uh, that's it. Oh, another thing, the filament that it comes with, they don't specify anywhere, but this is like 140 grams. But then I measured it, so anyone who's interested in buying this thing and wondering how much filament comes with it, 140 grams, or at least that's how much came with mine, maybe they don't make the same amount of filament for each sale, but that's how much came with mine anyway. And uh, yeah, so let's start this thing. So this is kind of the format of the video, I'm going to do a time lapse and then some talking about like once I complete a major step, so I just cut these little pieces of course, and I'm mainly doing this pulse so soon because I wasn't sure if the time lapse recording was working, this is the first time I've ever done time lapse, and um, well yeah, one thing I didn't realize about this laser cut wood, uh, you can sort of see it on some of the pieces, you can see that it's like a little darker around that, that's because there's like burnt wood sawdust. Now, I didn't realize that these planks were going to be covered in it, so my hands are just completely dirty. And uh, so is this page. I was I thought I was being super prepared and super clever. Putting these pages on here and then like sticking them to the table so that they don't move around and so that I can refer to them while I'm building it. Well, turns out that wasn't such a good idea because now they're covered in this weird dirt stuff and I'm probably going to keep covering them in dirt during the entire build. And uh, one more thing. Uh, basically, in the first part of the video, I showed you this piece. Uh, it came loose during shipping. I now noticed that it's been split in two, like there, rather badly. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine because it doesn't look. It's not a too important part. These sort of piece together like that at 90 degree angles, but the screws do actually hold them in place. These are just to sort of fit them in place, I guess. Uh, so yeah, next up is the Y carriage, I think. 
Also, you may have noticed I was being pretty careful to not try and break the pieces like this one. So, I think I did a good job. That's the wine carriage done. Uh, as you probably saw, I was struggling a lot with this piece because when I put this piece on, and once I finally got this thing on, I need to use a hammer <laughs> to get these little things to align. Um, I realized that this piece was missing, this one labeled Y top back. So I had to take it off again and uh, put it back on. But I learned a lot. Um, if it doesn't fit, try loosen screws, and if that doesn't help, hammer time. So, uh, yeah, and the piece that I said was broken at the beginning, or slightly broken, was actually the very first piece I attached, you can see it right there. Didn't matter much, so that's fine. Alright, on to the next piece, which is going to be um, something or other with the motor is the first step. Um, now I don't have thread locker, so for now I'm going to be using this here, nail polish. It's got shaded, not stirred, written on the top. I'm not sure if the camera's going to bother focusing. I don't know what that means, because I don't know much about nail polish. Maybe it's a James Bond joke. Uh, I don't know. But that should work until I actually get proper thread locker, in which case I should probably, hopefully be able to replace the screws.
Alright, so technically I haven't finished a major step yet, but this is a pretty major step for me because, oh man, these washers, not the bearings specifically, it's the washers that space the bearings between this wooden board and this, well, the washer and the screws, those were so annoying, it took me ages to get those things in. Um, I'm never really good with washers, they always get stuck in the screws. But I finally got them in properly. Usually for most things, I just leave out the washers because I hate washers. But for this for this occasion, it's going to be pretty important because we're going to need all the precision we can get. Uh, also, I zip-tied these things on. The f like One of the first things I zip-tied was this. Uh, apparently, spacing is super important. And I did that one wrong. I over here is they put in capital letters that it's very important that you get the zip tie placement right and this zip tie goes over there as opposed to all the others which are lined in the general pattern so I would have left it but it said it was super important so I cut the zip tie and put it on again with the notch over here because the first one I kinda made a mistake and I put it over here somewhere and I couldn't move it down there because it was too tight. So yeah, these are on pretty tight, so they should work. I'm surprised how tight these things can actually get. By the way, just zip-tied bearings. They're actually pretty freaking strong. I put on a rod, and I couldn't get thing, that thing to like wobble around at all. It was so sturdy. Also, I uh, put this thing on the wrong way around, as you might see. I've seen. I'm. I probably cut out all the bearing problems and stuff because that would have been very boring to watch. But yeah, I put this thing on the wrong way around. And now that I have to take the motor back out, put it the right way around, put it back in. Okay, so uh, now basically there's going to be a part that will attach this to the Z axis, the, um, the threaded rod for the Z axis, and. Um, it's going to be a y-axis stopper, and we're going to attach this to the y-axis thingy we made earlier, I think. So, uh, yeah. 